you were your age once, we had people who talked to us. And we're like, oh, my parents are making me do this. But you know, the thing that we realize now, because we can, we got something to look back. So we understand that you may not understand everything that's happening to you right this minute. But we know there's going to come a time in your life that you're going to look back and say, ooh, look what the Lord did for me in my life. Today is another one of those days. Because you're getting ready to meet some of them. A lot of people see. They see from afar. They know what they do. They know the work that they do. They may get to talk to them on the phone. But a lot of people don't get to meet this very important person. So you have a treat. And I found out something about this person that I didn't know. Because I'm new there. I don't know a lot about her. And um, even though I've seen her, I know that she's a legislator. What's a legislator? Who said that? Stand up, Jay. I need to get me some things. I got to get some prizes for people. Say it nice and loud for me. She's a what? Okay. She's uh, a representative for the state. So she's not the... Congress person, but she's. Oh, have you met this important person? No, I hadn't learned about it at school. Oh my gosh, isn't that marvelous? Did you know that? Did they teach you about you? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you when she looks back, she's saying, I never thought anybody would be teaching about me. <laughs> so, Jada, don't do that. Too smart. You brought up your name, and you brought up your name. That important thing that your mother gave you? She is a state legislator. She's been a teacher. She's been a professor, I guess it was a professor, here at Community College. When it was first beginning, I learned today. So she's a pace setter. Who knows what a pace setter is? <laughs> I like that. That's exactly what they do because they get out in front of everybody and they show you the way. Okay? So we want you to pay attention and um, be thinking while she's talking. What is it that you want to know? And if it doesn't get answered as she's talking with you, ask the question. So let's all stand and welcome Representative Geraldine Thompson to our As was mentioned, I am a member of the Florida House of Representatives, and there are 120 of us who are representatives. We are elected by people who live in our districts. I represent District 39, which is the western portion of Orlando. My district starts at Paramore and goes out to Pine Hills. All of those uh, communities from Paraport of Pine Hills are in my district. How many of you live in my district? Based on what I've just described. District 39. Okay. So we are elected and there are 120 uh, members. I am a Democrat, which means that I believe that uh, government has a role in providing a safety net for people who need help. There are other people uh, also in the legislature who don't think that government has a role in providing for people. But I want to explain uh, what it is that legislators do. Let me ask how many of you have purchased anything at a store recently? You purchased something. What did you purchase? You purchased food. Yes. Earphones. Okay, he purchased food, she purchased earphones. Now, in the state of Florida, we collect taxes, sales taxes, on some things and not on others. So when you purchase food, generally, there is no sales tax. When you purchase other items like earphones, there is sales tax. Do you know what the percentage of sales tax is in Florida? A dollar? Yes. Six percent. For every dollar that you spend, the state collects 
six cents. So if you buy something that costs a dollar, you would pay a dollar and six cents. And in Orlando, we have an extra uh, half of a percent for schools to support schools that are outdated and need to be upgraded and maintained, etc. Now, what happens to the sales tax that you pay? And there are 18 million people who live in Florida. That's a lot of people, 18 million. So imagine that all 18 million people are purchasing things and paying sales tax. What happens to the sales tax? Goes to the government. Through our Department of Revenue, the money goes to the government. And what legislators do is to decide how those sales tax dollars and property tax dollars are then going to be spent. When I started working uh, in the legislature, we had collected $70 billion. $70 billion. So that's the amount of money that we had to spend. What do you think we spend the money on? Yes. All right, so we spend it on schools. We spend it on hospitals. Anything else that you can think of? Yes. Houses. Sometimes we uh, will finance public housing. So housing. Think about things that all of us use, that everybody uses. Yes. Um, white buildings. Mm-hmm. White buildings. Some kind of buildings. So public buildings. Like if you went to uh, Zora Hurston Building downtown, that's a public building that everybody can use. Yes. Yes, sir. Mr. Quentin Cooper. Factories. Now, factories are usually owned by a private company. And we're thinking about things that are public that everybody can use. <coughs> yes. Very good. Roads. And other kinds of transportation. So these are some of the kinds of things that once we have the $70 billion, all of the legislators get together and decide how the money is going to be spent. And one of the things that we have to do uh, is to come up with the budget for the state of Florida. How much money are we going to give to education? How much money are we going to give to transportation? How much money are we going to give to health care, hospitals, etc.? You do have to divide it. You have to make some decisions. And there's another area where we spend a lot of money. Can you can you think of an area where the state might spend a lot of money? Well, the city uh, city governments uh, we do send money to city governments for things that everybody uses. Yes. Schools. Okay, we have schools. Yes. Stores. Now, stores are usually private concerns that are owned by private people. How about corrections and prisons? You think we spend a lot of money on corrections and prisons? We spend a lot of money on corrections. more money here, 
we would not have to spend as much money there. Do you think if you get a good education that it decreases the chances that you're going to end up in some kind of legal problem or in a correctional facility? Why, why do you think so? Because if you have like education, you have education now, like do it by yourself, having more of a time for someone would be that benefit you instead of just having more time to waste to do it like being that a problem. Absolutely. Yes. If you get a bad education, you'll be able to have your own business and make your own money. Make your own money, yes. If you get a good education, you'll be able to figure out what you want to do and not have to spend your time doing the time you're trying to get money and get money while you're going to Very good. Great observations that uh, you all have made. And so that's one of the reasons that I am an advocate for education. And I think we need to fund education uh, so that you have uh, very good teachers, you have very good facilities, you're able to provide the most up-to-date technology. How many of you get your lessons now in school on the computer? <coughs> One or two? Okay, so we need to make sure that as technology uh, comes on the scene, that our students are equipped to use this technology to learn. And so at some point, uh, you will come into a classroom where every uh, desk will have a laptop and you'll get your instruction through the computer more so than through your books. We're coming to that point. Uh, so you have to invest in schools. So we, we divide it up, we decide how much goes to corrections, how much to roads and transportation, schools, uh, et cetera. And sometimes it's not a pleasant experience dividing it up. I'm from Orlando. And do you think that I believe that Orlando should get more of the $70 billion than Miami should get? So I think Miami and Orlando should be the same. <coughs> That should be divided equal. Well, you know what happens is that the legislators from Miami said we need more of the money than Orlando does because we have more people down here and it costs more to live down here. And so we need more money. We're not going to divide it up equally. Uh, we're going to take the appropriation and take most of it to Miami. And what do you think I have to do when the Miami legislators say that? Yes. I have to prove my point. I have to debate. I have to convince. I have to convey to uh, the other people why it ought to be done differently. And so that's one of the things that a legislator does. We decide on the budget. And we have to have a balanced budget. We can't spend more than we take in. And what has happened over the last uh, four years as I mentioned, when I started uh, working in the legislature, we had $17 billion to spend. Last year, we had $66 billion to spend. What do you think happened that made us lose $4 billion? Well, we can't go into debt. We have to have a balanced budget. And remember, we get our money from sales tax, from property tax, uh, business corporate taxes. I haven't heard from you, Samantha. Go ahead. Recession. Yeah, we went into a recession. What does that mean? A recession. Sales go down. Where do you think Florida gets a lot of its money from? Yes, you buy some things when you go to the store, but where do you think we get a lot of our money? Yeah, we get it from taxes. Who pays it? Yes. China. We do borrow money from China. What about all of the visitors who come to Florida? You think they, they pay they pay sales tax? Yeah. So when the tourists come uh, to Florida, they pay the sales tax even though they don't live in Florida. 
So we get a lot of our money, our revenue is what we call it, from tourists. And when we went into the recession, what do you think happened to tourism? They didn't come. Because if you're in a recession um, and you're from Michigan and you live in Detroit and you used to have a job at um, Ford Motor Company, but now the cars that you used to make are being made in Mexico or someplace else where people will work for less than you're willing to work for. So that major companies have sent a lot of jobs offshore, as we call it. They've sent it to other, com other countries. So we're not uh, manufacturing things at the uh, rate that we used to manufacture things. So you're from Michigan, you live in Detroit, you don't have a job anymore making cars, uh, but you were thinking about taking your family on a vacation to Florida. So what do you do now? Hmm. You go to Florida anyway. I've lost my job. I may lose my house, but I'm going to take my family to Florida. I guess some people might, might do it like that. You know, let's have a good time before it really gets bad. But most people say, I'm going to have to cancel the vacation because we need to save this money for other things. So they don't come and they don't uh, buy the things here and they don't stay in the hotels. We collect uh, sales tax from the hotels as well. And so we don't have as much money. So that is one of the things that led us to losing $4 billion that we no longer uh, had available to fund things. So we had to make some tough choices. Things that we had funded at a certain level, we might have to decrease the funding or we might have to cut it out altogether. So when you hear of discussions uh, of we're going to have to cut funding to nursing homes, to hospitals, it's because of the decreasing amount of money that we have to work with. What are some of the things that you've heard that we're considering today? Have you heard about anything that the legislature is looking at? Any of you heard about uh, high-speed rail? You didn't hear about high-speed rail? What did you hear about high-speed rail? Okay. All right. Okay. Have you ever uh, gone to a city where you could get on a, a train or a subway and go anywhere you wanted to go? That train that I bullet train. Bullet train. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And President Obama uh, and the United States Department of Transportation had indicated that they were going to give Florida $2.4 billion to build a bullet train, starting in Orlando, going over to Tampa, and then later build another portion that would go to Miami. <coughs> And uh, just this week, our governor decided that Rick Scott is the governor, and uh, he decided that he didn't want the $2.4 billion that the Obama administration was going to make available to build the train. Because he says, I think it's going to cost more than $2.4 billion, and then the taxpayers will have to end up paying the rest of it. Now, there are no studies that show that, that prove that, but that is his opinion. The fact that we won't have the $2.4 billion means that people who were going to actually build the rails, people who were uh, going to be involved in construction, people who were going to have businesses along the route so that when the train stopped, you could be there selling Quizno sandwiches or something. What do you think happens to those people? Yeah, the jobs that we're not going to have. Uh, so there are consequences to every decision that you make. And so we're trying to figure out, well, can we go ahead with the project uh, without the governor's approval? So right now, 
Our lawyers are looking at it, and, and we really don't know what the outcome of that is going to be. But what has happened in Florida and the nation is that the manufacturing jobs that used to be available are now uh, occurring in other countries. A lot of things are now being handled in India. I want you to, if you, if you have on a, a, a shirt that you can take off without being immodest, I want you to look at the tag in the shirt and tell me where it was made. Anybody? Energy. 
or whether we're talking about gasoline or whether we're talking about uh, nuclear energy. Those are things of the future that we're going to have to think about. And what do you think the last one here would stand for? Medicine. Which is why the state of Florida has put a lot of money into a new medical school at the University of Central Florida. It's the same reason we're building a whole medical city uh, over by Lake Noma. There are, at this point, I think 12 universities in the state of Florida, so every city does not have its own university. Some people travel, for example, from Orlando to Gainesville to go to the university. Um, if you live in Lakeland, you might travel to the University of Central Florida. So no, not every city has its own university. We, we could not afford to pay for that. Every city, however, or region has a community college or a, what we call now state colleges so that it does make it, it's accessible, you can stay home and still uh, go to school. So these are going to be some of the jobs of the future, and I want you to begin to think about those jobs. Because what we saw happen in North Carolina when big tobacco was no longer the major industry there, it became a research hub in terms of medicine. And what we know is that based on advances in uh, medicine and what we know about the human body, that most Americans can look forward now to living to be 100 years old. But if you live to be 100 years old, it means you're going to need more medical attention because you're going to have more problems the older that you get. And so somebody is going to have to be trained to take care of the aging uh, population. And somebody is going to have to help us with this whole idea of energy. How do we get uh, energy? How do we manufacture it? The, the technology, the computers, and things like that. The, how many of you have a cell phone? Uh, almost everybody in the room has a cell phone. Um, so we know that technology is going to influence what happens in our country and certainly uh, science. So you, I've told you about the budget and how we come up with who gets what and we argue sometimes and then we finally compromise and we come up with the best solution that will work for everybody. The other thing we do is we pass laws. And if I see something that's going on that I think is detrimental, I may propose a law to deal with it. How many of you believe that you ought to be able to text and drive at the same time. So do you think you might, if you were in the legislature, you might file a bill to make it illegal to text and drive? Why do you think you should not be able to text and drive? Yes? If you're not focused, you could cause an accident. Good legislator. You stand up and you speak out and you 
Jack. Because not everybody thinks alike. DeAngelis says you should be able to text and drive, and he says you should be able to because it's your right, it's your privilege, and you shouldn't take privileges away from people. Anybody else uh, who has an idea of why you might not like her bill? So she has a good bill. That means nobody is going to try to change it. When you try to change a bill, that means you're going to amend it. I don't like what she's saying, so I'm going to offer this amendment and see if other people will come on my side. Uh, at least going to stop trying that, that law. Mm -hmm. Then, as, at least as you're hitting the red light, you, at least as you're hitting the red light, you should at least take the text then. But you should always stay focused because when you're being like, you have to go. Okay. But once you're doing it right, then that's when you should be able to take All right. Okay. Any other people who want to speak in favor of the Angelus's bill? Yes. budget, we also pass laws. 
One of the first bills that I found when I became a legislator would have required that if you are 18 and under, before you can get a driver's license in the state of Florida, you would have to prove that you had either graduated from high school or that you were currently enrolled in high school. Why do you think I would I would offer a bill like that? So you have to bring a certificate from the principal or the counselor when you went to the driving, uh, when you went to the highway safety and motor vehicle office before you could get your driver's license to show that you were in school. Any other reason you can think of that I would sponsor a bill like that?
Okay, the dropouts in like my bill. Well, you know, the truth is, if you talk to people who dropped out of school, they'll tell you they regret it. You talk to them when they're 20 years old, they said that it was a big mistake. I wish I had stayed in, I wish I had finished, I wish I had gone to college. And by that point in their lives, maybe they have two or three children, they can't stop working at McDonald's to go back to college, but they regret it. Uh, so it wasn't the people who dropped out who opposed my bill. Can you guess who opposed my bill? Parents, parents like the bill. Because parents have sometimes have a hard time with their children saying, you need to stay in school. The high schools. High schools. You know who opposed my bill? The businesses that hire uneducated people. <coughs> and they can pay an uneducated person a lot less. Can you think of businesses that uh, hire a lot of people who don't have a high school diploma? What kind of businesses would those be? Yeah. Yeah, we can, we can hire somebody to clean up the building, to make beds uh, in the hotels, to flip burgers. This area and the kind of businesses that operate in this area did not like my bill because they are looking at the workforce and they can pay a lot less if you don't have a high school diploma. So my bill did not pass. And they went and talked to other senators and representatives and said, don't vote for that bill. That's a crazy bill. Make sure it doesn't pass. And it didn't pass. So sometimes you have people who are called lobbyists and they'll come up and talk to the members and say, it would be a good idea if you vote this way or that way or, or whatever. So I think you have a, a good idea of what it is that I do. I live here in Orlando, but I travel between Orlando and Tallahassee. I got back from Tallahassee Thursday night. I go back to Tallahassee Monday afternoon. I come back Thursday night, and then I'm in Tallahassee for the legislative session, which begins in March and ends in May. And, and during that period of time, I don't travel back and forth. Yes. Yes. If a bill does pass mm -hmm. and the people of the town didn't like it and they didn't follow the rules, what would the government have to do? Well, if you break the law, then you uh, you suffer the consequences of whatever the penalty is. Uh, for example, if you know that the speed limit is 70, whether you like it or not, uh, and you decide that you're going to drive 80 miles an hour, well, you get stopped, you get a ticket, you have to pay the cost of the ticket, you might have to go to jail. So there are penalties for not following the law. Once a law passes and it becomes effective, most of our laws after the legislative session ends in May, our laws become effective July 1. And whatever that law is, you have to follow it. We saw um, a law that was introduced that said that you cannot leave a child under five years old in a car alone for more than 15 minutes. Why do you think somebody would introduce a bill like that? Yes, ma'am. Because the kids who are not going to school, they don't have the
uh, bill that said you had to take all of the sugary drinks out of school. Yeah, yeah, no more of these um, syrupy drinks that you drink. No more of the chocolate milk. Uh, do you know who was against that bill? Mm-hmm. No, Bis- think about businesses. Oh, the blue. What blue businesses? Blue. Yeah, exactly. So they came and talked to other legislators and said, there's nothing wrong with these sugary drinks. We know we have childhood obesity, but uh, obesity, but that's okay. You know, leave, leave, leave it in there. So you, 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 you hit on a good question. And the reason that it doesn't happen is that there are businesses that are making money from providing you the pizza and whatever else it is, and they want to continue to provide that rather than spending the money on apples and a, a nice salad for you and uh, something that's fresher that won't contribute to uh, obesity later on. So a lot of it is all driven by money. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, if it passed, the F cap would be gone.